What's up friends? Time for another one of my unboxing videos on the School Zone. We're going to dive right into it because we have a very cool bonus segment at the end which I'll talk about in a second. But first, if you're interested in getting these mystery boxes for yourself, there's a link in the description below that'll give you both a special discount on your order and help the School Zone out a tiny bit in the process. So click that special link in the description below and use the coupon code SCHOOLZONE for your bonus discount. So the extra footage after the 1UP box merch is our first community unboxing segment here on the School Zone. If you watched my last few trivia unboxings, Unboxing videos, you heard me mention that it would be cool to unbox on camera anything you guys want to send me and hear me give you some cool facts and trivia about it as well as give you an appreciative shout out. Well, I received the first community unbox in the mail this month and it's from a viewer named Jack Caldwell. He runs a youth ministries program and has been an active member of the after school club for quite a while. He told me I might have some fun giving some factoids about some of the stuff inside and he's right. So a sincere thanks to you, Jack, and we'll get to unboxing his stuff at the end. But first, let's dive into today's one up box. Here's the explanation card that comes with the box. Each month features a theme, and this month's theme is fight. As usual, I like to start with the small items and work our way up. The smallest item in the box is usually a little button. And this time we have the mascot panda dressed up like, I believe, Doctor Strange. Actually, the next item also involves Doctor Strange, so let's get right onto that so I can give you some cool factoids. Okay, the second item we'll take a look at here is a sticker. The info card says Sanctorum sticker. In this case, I think this is actually one of those 1UP box mashup items combining Doctor Strange lore and Spider-Man. Now since I gave some trivia about Spider-Man in a past episode, let's go with some trivia about Doctor Strange. So Doctor Strange is from the Marvel Universe and first appeared in a 1963 issue of Strange Tales. First conceived, of course, by none other than Stan Lee, Doctor Strange is one of only a handful of superheroes in the Marvel Universe that uses magic and carries magic items instead of, you know, being a mutant or a weapon-toting martial artist. Doctor Strange is actually in my top 10 of all-time favorite superheroes, so I was super psyched when they came out with a movie about him last year. It was actually really good if you haven't seen it in our, you know, in the comic book movies. Okay, moving on to the next item. The info card says Legend of Hearts. Let's take a look at this mini poster here. So I do believe this is a reference to Legend of Zelda and the heart could represent Link's life gauge. So assuming I'm in the right ballpark here, I can give you some factoids about Legend of Zelda. So the Zelda series was first released by Nintendo and creator Shigeru Miyamoto for the original NES back in the late 1980s. I've mentioned Miyamoto in past unboxings because he was also the brains behind the Mario franchise. Interestingly enough, even though he's Japanese, inspiration for the Zelda franchise came from the stories of King Arthur, Peter Pan, and even American author F. Scott Fitzgerald. The Zelda series inspired not only many sequels and spin-offs, but also TV shows, comics, toys, board games, and even talk of a film. So it's definitely been one of Nintendo's most successful franchises besides Mario Brothers. All right, next item up is a light up yo-yo. Let's see which one I got. And I got the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> cool. Now I've given facts in past videos about the TMNT, so instead I'll just give you some quick factoids about yo-yos. This may come as a surprise, but yo-yos actually date back to ancient Greece. I don't know what the Greeks called them back then, but by the 18th century, Europeans called them bandalores. They also made their way to India and Asia. It wasn't until the 1920s and 30s that the modern version of the toy became popular in America and was renamed the yo-yo. And by the 1960s, all kinds of shapes and lights and tricks became the fad. Next, we have something called a Rip Spin Warrior. You can get one of nine different characters. Let's see who I got. And I got Ryu from the Street Fighter franchise, my favorite Street Fighter character. I don't know if I want to open it and figure out how it works, but I can certainly give you some factoids about Street Fighter. So the original Street Fighter game first came to the arcades in 1987. Of course, created by Japanese game developers. The Japanese made all the best video games back in the day. In the original game, you could only play Ryu, or Ken if you came in as a second player. The franchise blew up and featured many more playable characters in follow-up games. Let me tell you, I was so addicted to Street Fighter 2 when I was a kid. In fact, I played Ryu so much, I started being able to do his Hadouken fireball move in my dreams. <laughs> Which was great for fending off nightmares as a kid, you know what I mean? Oh, you can and last but not least, the t-shirt, guaranteed with every box. Super Tacos. Okay, strange but cute. Let's take a look. I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that's supposed to be Deadpool. Now why he's flying and why there are cloud tacos, I can't explain, but since I'm not positive about this one, I'm gonna skip the factoids. But there are many more factoids to come with our first community unboxing. So let's clear the board and dive right into that. 
All right, so Jack actually sent me about a dozen items in the box, which was incredibly generous. So I picked out the most schoolable items out of the bunch to feature here. Here we have a coin. Very cool. I used to collect coins when I was a kid. This one looks like a 50 cent euro. Now these coins have been in circulation since I believe 2002 and are made of a substance called Nordic gold. Although it doesn't actually contain any gold. It's made of a copper alloy that doesn't tarnish very easily. This particular coin looks like it originated in Greece with the image of uh, Venizelos, who was a Greek social reformer and helped modernize Greece. So very cool. Thanks, Jack. Next included were some solar eclipse viewing glasses, sometimes called solar viewers or simply eclipse glasses. I missed the big solar eclipse last month, but these will come in handy for next time. Some of you may have had a chance to see it. So why do you need these kind of glasses anyway? Well, very briefly, the sun projects electromagnetic radiation as all stars do. Most of what we see is visible light, but it also projects infrared and ultraviolet light, both of which can actually burn a hole in the back of your eye. We've all probably seen what happens when you take a magnifying glass, the sun, and an ant on the ground. Well, behind your cornea is a liquid lens. Think of that like the magnifying glass, and the back of your eye is the ant. <laughs> Add direct sunlight, you're burning that ant on the back of your eye. Ironically, you'll be left with a hole in your retina that kind of looks like an ant in your eye for the rest of your life. So yeah, only use certified solar viewers when looking at an eclipse. Next thing Jack included was a snow globe. I think this is from the Will Ferrell film Elf. But since I'm not positive about that, I'll give you some cool factoids about snow globes instead. So snow globes first became a thing back in 19th century France and eventually migrated across Europe over to the States. The contents of snow globes have changed over the years, but nowadays the liquid inside is actually antifreeze and the snow flitter is made of soap flakes. That's why you want to be careful if a snow globe ever breaks because the substance can be harmful to pets and babies that might put the liquid in their mouth. Fortunately, most aren't made of glass anymore like in Citizen Kane. They're usually made of an acrylic plastic. This is fun, guys, schooling your stuff and all that. Next item that was included was a Powerpuff Girl figurine. It's meant to be worn as a ring and won't stand up by itself. That's why I have a little clip holding it up. But anyway, this is pretty cool. I'm not a huge fan of the Powerpuff Girls, but I know a thing or two about them. So the series first aired on the Cartoon Network in 1998. Three little girls with superpowers. I think this one is supposed to be Blossom. The show was hugely popular, spawning merch, games, a movie, and was even nominated for the Emmys. I think there was even a series reboot that aired last year. This is an item that will probably go to one of the kids at the children's hospital around Christmas time. Since Jack works in youth ministries, I'm sure he'd be cool with that. Next thing he included was a DVD of the movie Get Smart. This is pretty cool because I've never actually seen this movie, so I'll be checking that out tonight. It has a great cast too, some of my favorite actors. So in case you didn't know, this movie is actually based on a TV show from the 1960s. It was meant to be a parody of James Bond and the whole spy genre that was trending at the time. So the main character kind of comically bumbles his way into solving crime and thwarting enemies. And a lot of the James Bond-like gadgets were turned into jokes, like Agent 86's shoe phone or the camera in the soup. Anyway, looking forward to checking out the reboot. And last but not least, we have a lightsaber. How cool is that? It actually turns on, lights up, and even makes uh, lightsaber swishing noises when you wave it around. So I can definitely give you some cool factoids about lightsabers. Interestingly enough, George Lucas wasn't the first to fictionalize the concept of an energy sword. Several authors included similar items in their books well before Star Wars, including Larry Niven, Franz Lieber, and Isaac Asimov. But George Lucas was the first to show it on film and in a way that was reminiscent of samurai soldiers. And here's an interesting factoid, lightsabers started being used by dark side of the force users as dark sabers. The Jedi later made a version of the weapon that was aligned towards the good side of the force. But then eventually both good and evil force users just ended up using generic lightsabers and the dark saber fell into disuse. Awesome stuff guys, and again a huge thanks to Jack Caldwell for being the first on the community mail trivia unboxing. And if any of you want to mail your stuff to get unboxed and schooled on the school zone, the address is down in the description below. Well that's going to round out this episode, hope you had some fun with me, maybe learned a thing or two. I'll be showcasing more awesome collectibles each month going forward and culminating with that Christmas toy giveaway at the end of the year. And remember, if you want to get a huge discount on a one-up box of your own and help the channel out a little bit in the process, then be sure to use the link below in the coupon code schooled zone when you order. Thanks again for watching. Throw a quick like in the video and share it around anyone you know who's into pop culture and stuff like this. They might have some fun with this video. And we'll see you back soon with more awesome videos on the school town. Peace out.